I don't know that you've got the utmost respect for KD, but when, is there anything that he does at this point that still surprises you, or are you just used to seeing that kind of level? I, I'll tell you, I definitely don't take it for granted. Um, I, I definitely don't uh, take his talent and his, and his amount of hard work that he puts into not only his craft, but just his life, how he treats himself. You know, I don't take it for granted. Um, you know, we got to enjoy the time while he's here, not just as a, as a teammate, but the whole entire world watching. You know, and uh, he's in, uh, impacted the world of sport, you know, completely. But when he's doing performances like this on a consistent basis, you just you can't take it for granted. You just continue to uh, feed him good energy and just want to see him continue to be consistent with that. So he puts a lot of... Uh, hard work in, a lot of pressure on himself at times, and uh, he wants to be the best. And when I'm alongside him, I want to be the best too. So we continue to push each other in ways that go way beyond the court, but we're on the court um, and we're playing well, it looks good. So we just want to keep it up. You said, you know, obviously he wants to be the best. This is, that's the highest scored quarter he's ever had. He's 34. I mean, is this... What's 34 in NBA well, years, though? That's all I'm saying. You know that question I was going to ask you, man. This. <laughs> well, my point is, is this the best... This, yeah. Is this the best... I don't mean tonight. Yeah. I mean, is this the best extended run that you've seen him have? Uh, to be up close, yeah. It, I, I, the numbers show. So, um, you know, when, you're out, when, we're out, when we're out there, it doesn't necessarily feel like that because he makes it look so easy or he gets it in um, a myriad of ways. He's a three-level scorer, four-level scorer at times, shooting a deep ball. So, um, you know, when he gets on stretches like this, you want to play well alongside him. You know, that, that's really how I feel. I, I want to play long, uh, well alongside him because um, it's one thing if one person on the team is going 40 every night, 35 every night, but when we're dishing the ball the way we are, when we're playing defense the way we are, then it looks it makes his performances look even more spectacular as it should because we're winning. You know, if he was doing it and uh, we were just having these ups and downs, which the last few years have shown, um, you know, then it, it doesn't feel as good. But when we're winning like this and, and the team feels good and we know that we're not panicking and we're making we're having turnovers and we're having lulls in the game, but we're just not holding our head. We're just trusting what we got going on and then, you know, just playing basketball. Kyrie, when you walked out in the fourth quarter, you and Kevin were kind of there and it looked like Kevin just nodded to you, like, we have this. I mean, is that is that sort of how you felt? You don't want to, you know, waste that kind of performance or you're, you know? No, not, not, we don't want to waste any performance. <laughs> right. you, you know, right. it, you want to waste any performance. But to your point, yeah. uh, when uh, Kev's out of the game and I'm in, uh, we hold each other to utmost accountability. You know, if he, if he gets the lead back, uh, or he lets go of a lead, you know, we, we look each other in the eye and it's like, man, we got to be better or just continue this. So uh, we've created that dialogue, but it doesn't just happen with me and him. It, cre it creates energy and synergy amongst everybody. We know when we raise our level, um, especially when we need stops and we haven't played as well in the first half or one quarter. Uh, you know, one of our leaders, Kev, gets it going. We keep pushing him, and he keeps pushing us. And when he gets us to lead back or he ties the, ties the ball game, then I have to come in and do what I do, and then we do it together. Um, but the, the guys around us really make us great. So it, it's, that, that's really the tale of the story this year. It's just the guys around us, you know, we're, we're making each other better. Kerry, following up on that, you had 38 and you got rolling too. What is it like for you guys specifically to play off one another in these kind of games when you're playing at that kind of level offensively? Ah, uh, man, I mean, that level offensively, you know, when, when we're just clicking on, on, on all cylinders and, and guys are not necessarily just making shots, but we're doing the little things, uh, it, it feels good. The team morale is good. And uh, there, there's a level of poise that we're learning about one another in these situations. We're down 17, down 19, down 15. And though we want, don't want to be in these holes, it's a challenge for us to face as a team that we haven't faced as a group um, on a consistent basis of, you know, 40 games or 50 games as of yet. And, um, I think I said it the other night, the best team is determined in April, May, and June. So these are tune-ups right now where uh, we want to continue to play well. We're not going to shoot the ball well every single night, but our defensive principles got to be able to stand up to any team in this league. We see the best teams in the league. They're up there in the defensive um, categories and statistics. And um, if we could marry our offense and our defense, then I feel like we got a good run that we could put together uh, moving forward. You talk about the best teams obviously are rooted in their defense. Mm -hmm. Is it would you agree with his assessment? It looked like you know Nick struggled defensively in the first half, kind of grew back into his own in the second half, got that big block late. What A, what allowed him to do that? And B, just how irreplaceable is his defense for the way you guys want to play? 
he's an asset. He's he's uh, he, he brings much more um, than just his defensive presence. Him just being out there and being a smart player and making the right choices out on that end. Um, we give him the utmost freedom to go and chase shots. Uh, he's gotten better over the last few years. So we, we just want to include him in everything that we do, uh, especially on the defensive end, because he cleans up a lot of our mistakes. And um, teams have, over the last few years, lived at our rim or have been you know, out on the perimeter and th they've gotten things easy. So uh, we don't want any more knocks on our game as much. So if we can limit our weaknesses and be able to play through uh, certain challenges throughout the, the game, then I, I feel like it sets us up for what we're preparing for. So every game is a chance for us to continue to prepare for when those months come later down the line. But we're going to enjoy every moment and every day. And when Nick, alongside other guys, are, are doing the little things, it makes the world a difference for our team. Last question. Yeah, you're not going to see Steph um, when you see the Warriors in a couple days. You're going to see Clay. Hey, Steph, please get healthy. Please get healthy, brother. Wish you nothing but the best. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, you are going to see Clay. Mm -hmm. And you guys haven't seen him in, I think, three, three years or so. What does it mean to you? And I know how closely you follow the game, how much respect you have for guys in the game to be able to see him on the floor again having success. Shoot, man. I, I tell you, anytime we, we get a, a guy back in our league that has been through a journey that uh, a lot of people don't necessarily know about behind the scenes, how much it takes, how much sacrifice it takes to put your body, your mind, your spirit through all of the rigors of rehab and, um, you know, sitting on the sideline and, you know, going through every emotion with something that you love to do for a living. You know, it's a job for us, it's work, but we love to do it, um, especially the ones that want to separate themselves. You know, Clay's one of those ones that's always wanted to separate themselves in the league. He's a, a great winner. He, he's a team player, and he has an edge about him that um, you know pushes his opponents. And for us, and and you know this brotherhood here that we have, as well as the sisterhood, like we we believe that anybody that's coming back from injury and they haven't been on the court for two years, we got to give them grace, we give them patience, and we give them a lot of confidence whether we're going against them or not. So uh, I'm always appreciative when we could go against guys that um, you know have been through bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain. He has won a championship the way he did. Um, and as you can tell, just how long-winded this answer is at times, it's just I, I love him and I just want to see him do well. So for him to come back into Brooklyn and play against us and me going against him, a fellow at number 11 as well, it feels good, man. So I'm happy for him. Um, but when we step on that court, you know it's all competition. So.